Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, October 24th, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Round up a little incident I had in my home network today. Now, wasn't a breach. It was uh, more, well, sort of an availability issue. And the problem here is with Apple TVs. Looks like Apple TVs uh, have started in some recent update to act as, well, IPv6 routers in the sense that they are sending router advertisements. Not really clear why they're doing a comment that is quite plausible that was sent to the post is that it may be related to the threat and matter networking protocols. These are home automation protocols that have been implemented in recent versions of Apple TV and well, they rely on these unique local IPv6 addresses. However, uh, these router advertisements can conflict with other router advertisements that you may have in your network and lead to instabilities in IPv6. Looks like particular Linux has some issues here about getting the priority of these IP addresses straight. So if you have some issues with IPv6 connectivity, in particular from Linux, it may be your Apple TV that is interfering. If you have any other insight here, it really would be interesting to hear uh, how to possibly disable these router advertisements. Haven't really uh, sort of seen a good way of doing that in the Apple TV setup. Uh, there is pretty much no IPv6 uh, configuration ability whatsoever and uh, also disabling some of the HomeKit functionality uh, still uh, doesn't disable these router advertisements. And remember how a couple of weeks ago, I think it was, I talked about a number of vulnerabilities that were made public in the Squid proxy. Squid being a very, very popular proxy server used by a lot of networks and also often embedded into other uh, products. Well, it looks like we have uh, three more patches now for these vulnerabilities. In particular, one that I was sort of interested in was uh, the HTTP Digest authentication buffer overflow this looked like it was uh, reasonably easy to exploit they gave it a severity of 9.9 .9 here on the squid uh, dash cache website but they only describe it as a denial of service uh, vulnerability so not really sure you know, uh, how this all works out. Of course, a buffer overflow is not necessarily exploitable for a code execution. Some of this may also be depending on the operating system it's running on and how it was compiled and such. But uh, definitely take a look if you find packages available for your favorite operating system if you are using a squid. The two other vulnerabilities, there's another one that's rated critical. It's a request response smuggling vulnerability. And then we also have a denial of service in FTP that's rated as high severity. Probably the least of the issues here by far, uh, particular compared to the digest authentication buffer overflow. And Citrix released an advisory that they now have a fix available for CVE 2023-4966. This is a session hijacking vulnerability that uh, was originally sort of uh, made public and uh, apparently uh, built uh, with a fix. was released in October 10th, but at the time it was not known to be already exploited. Well, that has changed now. It is being exploited so CISA added it to its known exploited vulnerabilities catalog and you definitely should apply this update it affects Netscaler ADC and Netscaler Gateway. And then also lots of talk these last few days about exploitation of CVE 2023-2198. This is the Cisco iOS XE vulnerability that was already exploited before a patch was released. Now, there are some sort of widely differing numbers of vulnerable and exploited devices and disappearing exploited devices. What a lot of this is about is that, first of all, there is sort of no 
great way often to determine exploited devices and vulnerable devices. Yes, there are these internet wide scans, but they're not always accurate given that you have dynamic IPs and uh, all kinds of sort of complications here. Honeypots and the like uh, may give you some false positives. Also, what typically happens with widely exploited uh, vulnerabilities like this, that you have multiple groups sort of fighting for these devices so you may have a particular uh, backdoor that's easy to detect that's then being replaced by the next group with something that's not as easy to detect or basically uses some other communication mechanism that the standard tests are not really responding to if you are finding a device in your network that hasn't been patched yet assume not just one compromise assume multiple compromises Compromises. I'm linking again to the advisory from Cisco, which has been updated with sort of some of the indicators that they have seen uh, for compromised devices. But assume there is more than just one or two groups that are going after uh, these devices. Well, and this is it for today. So thanks again for listening. Thanks for liking, recommending, and uh, for leaving good reviews for this podcast. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.